So hi, I'm Rachel. I'm our Monitoring and Evaluation Manager at PEAS, uh, which means that I basically look after data and evidence uh, across the organization. Uh, so part of my role is managing uh, studies that are done of our work and wanted to um, share today some of the findings from the latest research we've had done um, on our program in Uganda. So PEAS basically um, strives to achieve impact across three key areas of our work. Those are expanding access uh, to secondary school uh, for young people in Africa, um, ensuring quality learning outcomes, and thirdly, ensuring sustainability of our approach. So last year, we actually co-commissioned um, an evaluation of our program in Uganda, which was looking at these three areas, um, access, quality, and sustainability, and doing that through basically comparing um, schools, peace schools in Uganda, with government schools, as well as other private school operators in the country. Um, the study itself is led by um, a Ugandan think tank called the Economic Policy Research Center, um, who have worked with the um, UNEB, the Ugandan National Examinations Board, to basically conduct standardized testing in our schools, which is looking at the progress that students are making in learning English and maths, um, as well as comparing school quality uh, through doing things like lesson observations, um, surveying teachers and students, and also just inspecting kind of the facilities at the school. Um, so it's a three-year study, and after this first year, um, we've had some really interesting findings, uh, particularly in the area of access. Um, so we've learned basically that our student population uh, varies quite substantially um, from students in both government schools as well as other private schools. Uh, specifically, about 60% um, of our students come from the two lowest asset quintiles in Ugandan society. Uh, which is compared with 39% in government schools and only 19% in private schools. So in a way, you know, these, these findings aren't really that surprising to us um, just because PEAS actually exist um, to serve exactly these types of students. Um, we have a number of policies which uh, specifically target um, kind of these types of populations. First of all, we intentionally build our secondary schools um, in largely underserved and rural communities. Uh, we operate a non-selective admissions policy, uh, meaning that basically anyone who passes primary school is allowed to enroll in our schools, which is different from what even government schools would do in Uganda. Um, and thirdly, we keep our fees very low, um, so we basically benchmark our fees against uh, government school fees and ensure that basically our schools are the most affordable type available. So as a result of that, um, we're obviously attracting a student population that largely isn't served by the mainstream. Uh, which I think is encouraging to know that um, even as a very young organization, uh, we're really achieving kind of our, our mission so far um, in Uganda with trying to expand access to underserved communities. Um, and then coming on to the second side of findings that are, are really quite exciting, uh, when we look at quality, so basically student learning, uh, again seeing some really exciting progress. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the evaluators are doing standardized testing uh, with our students and found basically that um, students in PEAS schools are performing better than students in government schools in both their progress in English and maths, and they're performing uh, better than students in private schools as well in English and equal with students in private schools in maths. Um, and this is despite our students actually starting further behind. Uh, so they found that basically students at the point they enroll in our schools have worse uh, primary leaving exam scores, so kind of in a primary um, examination scores are much worse. So they're actually coming from farther behind to actually catch up with or overtake their peers in other schools within as little as um, one to two years. Um, so again, really, really kind of interesting to see that uh, the schools are helping the students to make that kind of progress. And uh, so far they found that there's three things that differ in P schools uh, that uh, can explain that. The first being that we have stronger school management practices, uh, the second being that we have uh, better community engagement and also child protection policies. And thirdly, that we have more participatory classroom teaching, so much more interactive classroom environment than was observed in other school types. And those three factors together explain a large degree of the additional learning that we see um, among students in P schools compared to other schools. Uh, so that's just the findings from the baseline year. Um, we're looking forward to future years in the study, wherein we'll find out more about the cost effectiveness um, of our schools compared to other school types, and also to unpick more of um, this question of what is it that really drives additional learning. Um, but that's all for this year. Hmm.